would encourage you and me to put the big rock in first. Be wise. So, so what is wisdom? Well, wisdom is the ability to make good decisions. Period. Two friends were discussing it. One friend said, well, wait a minute. Now let me get this right. You're saying that, that all that wisdom is is the ability to make good decisions. Period. He said, period. End of discussion. He says, no, you got it right. Because the ability to make good decisions is not the end of it. You must take action on those decisions. And he said, my friend, once again, you've gotten it wrong. He said, because if you have the ability to make good decisions, then the, the decision to take action is a good decision you'll make. Ability to make good decisions. What if you could make a good decision every time? My friends on Tuesday night are recovering from chemical dependency have a phrase that they've taught me. And when in doubt, they say, we do the next right thing. Well, that's all well and good, as long as what? You know what the next right thing is, and that's where God wants to help us. To make the next right decision. To, make the, to have the ability to make good decisions about what to do, about what not to do. About what to say, about what not to say. About when to take action and when not to take action. About how to take that action. Wisdom is the ability to make good decisions. If you know the right thing to do, you're intelligent. If you know the right thing to do and choose to do it, you're wise. As well as intelligent. As we develop wisdom, the difference it will make in our lives is remarkable. I, don't you wish you could have old King Solomon, like I said, just have him right there with you on every decision. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be neat? So how do we get this wisdom? One thing is sure, we cannot buy it. We cannot earn it. We cannot inherit it. Some people would say that wisdom comes from experience. You know, if you make enough bad decisions, you begin to develop good judgment and that leads to wisdom. There's only one problem with that. Some of us continue to make the same decisions that are bad over and over and over again and we haven't developed wisdom. Some of us are the, are the personification of Einstein's definition of insanity. You know what that is, don't you? Doing the same thing over and over and over again expecting different results. See, that doesn't give us wisdom. Wisdom. How do you get it? Well, I'd like to start where King Solomon started. I'm not a king. You're not a king. But you, can, you and I can sure pray like one. We can pray to God. You are God. I am not. You have infinite resources. I do not. You have all the ability and power. I do not. And I humbly bow before you, God, and I ask you to please give me wisdom. King Solomon serves as an ideal example of an important principle that Jesus taught his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount. Remember it? He said, seek, chase after, pursue the most before you do anything else, the kingly rule of God in your heart and mind, and all this other stuff will be thrown in to boot as part of the deal. Now that's kind of my translation of that. That's what Jesus is saying. Seek first the kingdom of God. The most, the, the first, the most before. Top priority. Jesus is saying, put the big rock in first and God will throw all this other stuff that you're so worried about. He'll give it to you. We need to choose to put the big rock in first. And that big rock, that'd be Jesus. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could have Solomon walk around with us? Yeah? But you, you realize that Matthew in his Gospel says that one who is greater than Solomon is here. And that'd be Jesus. 
So we can walk around with Jesus, right? He can ride right beside me, right? No, it's more than that. He's here. Here. If we choose it. If we desire it. The question today is this. Are you and I going to go it alone depending on our own wisdom and end up with a meaningless, empty life? Or are you and I going to put the big rock in first and allow God's wisdom to fill us up and give us meaning and significance in every single day of our life. Several years ago, a famous neurosurgeon received a phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning. It seems there had been a tragic accident, several injuries, a couple of deaths, and there was a young man who needed brain surgery immediately, and, and he was the one to do it. So he got dressed, jumped his car, drove toward the hospital, and he came to a very busy intersection. He slowed down to a stop, and immediately a man jumped off the curb with a pistol, hijacked his car, left him standing there. He was so disheartened because he knew he wasn't going to get there in time. And they thought he was coming, so they wouldn't call another doctor. He feared the young man's life would be gone. But he had some consolation because he had fixed in his mind a good description of that man who hijacked his car and he would never forget the brown coat and the green hat. Finally he arrived at the hospital and they told him the bad news. The young man didn't make it. But Doc, could you do us a favor? The young man's father's in the waiting room. Would you go in and tell him? Break the news to him. So the doctor went into the waiting room. There was only one person there. He looked into the tear-stained eyes of that man. And he had on a brown coat and a green hat. We're going to do it alone using our own judgment, our own wisdom. Are we going to put the big rock in first? And allow God to bless us with His wisdom and give us all that other stuff that we worry about. Father, thank You that You not only have saved us, but You choose to live within us and to bless us with Your very person. To give us Your personality and Your wisdom. Help us to have the courage and yes, even the wisdom to choose you for your glory and our well-being.